Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and today I'm gonna show you guys how to make this. So the track is by Mesto and Mike Williams. It's called Wait Another Day. I know it's a little bit old, but you guys have been requesting this song a ton, so I figured I might as well remake it. Anyway, you can get the presets below for free, or you can download the whole project file if you want all the samples and stuff too below as well. So the lead is the main focus of the drop, so I'll just solo the lead so you guys can hear it, and I'll go through all the individual lead layers too. So here's what all the lead layers sound like together. <laughs> So first layer sounds like this, second layer, third layer, and fourth layer. So each is kind of serving a different purpose and I'll get more into that, but uh, this first layer is really like the main sound that's taking up the most room in the mix. So uh, it's just a classic saw lead, it's a really big saw lead um, in Serum. It's a saw wave with 15 voices of unison and some detune. And then I have this bend plus minus feature on. I just turned it all the way to the left. So that makes the sound a little thinner. And just gives it more of that character I was looking for. So uh, there's nothing going on with the filter in this oscillator tab. But in the effects section, we have some compression, distortion, and EQ just some multiband compression, diode one distortion, and just some EQ, getting rid of some annoying frequencies around 4000 Hertz. For external processing, all I have on this sound is this EQ cutting off the low end, and I'm sending it to a reverb, which I'll go over after I go over all the other leads. And also the lead bus has some things on it, which I'll also go over later. So after that lead layer is this reverb lead layer. <laughs> And this is the exact same sound as the last sound I just showed you. The only difference is there's just seven voices of unison instead of 15. And also for external processing, I put this reverb on it at 100% wet. And it has a short decay time, just like half a second. And that just puts this lead in a little space. And I added some pre-delay so it wouldn't mix with the other lead too much. And it just makes the other lead layer sound way bigger. So I'll play the first lead with and without this reverb layer. So it makes a huge difference in just making the lead sound a lot bigger. So those are the wider leads. Now we have to have a lead that's right in the middle of the mix that's kind of the driving force. And that would be this third layer right here. So this lead layer is this MSAW wave that you can find in the analog section. And I've used the bend plus minus feature and turned it all the way to the left and the wavetable position is all the way to the right. And it just has one voice of unison because it's right in the middle of the mix. I forgot to mention the other leads I had this going on too. I have mono checked and I've always checked. So I have some portamento on there so the notes kind of glide into each other. Then in the effects section on here, I have some dimension expander, um, some multiband compression, some diode one distortion, and that same little EQ cut just to get rid of some annoying frequencies. So without all these effects, it sounds like this. Then with the effects. The effects just really bring it to life. So the only external processing I have on this one, again, is just a little bit of EQ. And then there's one last lead layer to talk about. And that is just a Nexus layer. It's like a flute pluck sound that sounds like this. So this preset is called PL Alpha Flute. I forget what expansion pack it's in, but it really just adds some attack to the overall lead. And I made sure in the modulation section just to add this uh, little portamento here, so it matches the other leads with the portamento. So add all these leads together, here's what you get. So then I'm sending all these leads to the same reverb in bus one over here. And this reverb has a few different things on here. So it has this transient designer just taking out the attack of the sound before it gets to the reverb. 
Then is the actual reverb, which is a Valhalla Room large chamber down here. And then I have some EQ, just cutting off the lows and highs of the reverb. Then after that, I added some OTT to compress the reverb, make it sound bigger. And then I added some compression so I could sidechain the reverb signal to the lead signal. So all these leads I'm sending to bus 22 here, which has no output, so it's not doing anything. But then I'm taking bus 22 and using it as the sidechain input for this reverb. So now every time the lead plays, the reverb signal ducks and then comes back in in between the notes. So you can see that gain reduction right in here. So then the last thing I have on my reverb chain is just some gain. So that's why I have this whole bus right here in the arrange window, and I've automated the gain throughout the drop of the reverb. So I'll make this a little more drastic so you can hear it. So I just had it at plus six dBs for those rises. And then every once in a while, the reverb just completely cuts out. That's just to make the last snare hit of those bars stand out a little bit more and just cut out the reverb. So then the last piece of processing on these leads is that I'm sending them all to bus five, which is a lead bus, and I'm compressing them together with this Logic compressor. That sounds really good, I think. So without this compressor, they don't really sound glued together at all. Then once I add it in, they sound a lot more glued together. I'm also adding a little distortion with this module down here, the soft distortion. So then after that compression, I'm adding a little bit of overdrive, and then I just have two EQs kind of to shape the sound after that. So I just added those EQs during the mixing phase just to make it sound a little bit more like the original. And then I have some kickstart side chaining it. So without all that stuff on the lead bus, here's what the lead sound like. Then with all those effects. Just everything sounds a lot more glued together and the tone of the lead sound a lot better. So the last thing to talk about would just be the bass. So here are the three bass layers. Here's what they sound like together. So first up, we have a sub bass layer that is just a saw wave, one voice of unison, two octaves down, um, compressing it, distorting it, and filtering it so none of those high frequencies get out. Then layered with that one is this FM bass that sounds really cool. And I'll link this preset below as well if you guys want it. It's a pretty simple sound as well. And then you'll notice the bass is sliding in pitch at some points throughout the drop. So if I go into my MIDI here and check out the pitch bend section, you can see where the pitch bends are. So during every one of those pitch bends, there's a third layer just accentuating those pitch bends a little bit. And that would be this layer right here. It's a pretty cool sound when you layer it with a lower bass. And it is just a saw wave, one voice of unison, and some AC hum one noise over here. And then we just have this um, hyper section with the re-trigger checked and the detune all the way down. Just adds a cool character to the sound. And then some multiband compression, tube distortion. This filter is not doing anything. And then I've just rolled off the EQ on the bottom. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'll play the full remake again at the end of the video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Spotify below. And other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.